Washington! Good morning, Washington. How you all doing? And Baltimore, too, and all the ships in the sea. How you all doing, everybody? I hear some breaking news about the Washington Post. The Washington Post, they're going to start the Capital Weather Gang Lonely Hearts Club. That's right. You know, you ever, I, you know, get up in the middle of the night and you go on the Capital Weather Gang and there's like 500 messages on one of their posts about the weather. And these poor people are getting up at three in the morning. Well, it's uh, it's 32 degrees here in Clarksville and the weather and the, uh, the and the rain gauge shows one tenth of an inch or We've got six inches of snow here in Sykesville, or, or you know, uh, La Plata. It's the wind is at two miles an hour, and uh, there's a certain cloud in the sky. People will get up and post, and you see, you know, like the middle of the night, Friday night. You know, people should be out partying, and they're sitting on the Capital Weather Gang, posting all this weather stuff. You know, like they, they're monitoring it. You know, oh, the, there's frost on the pumpkin, and there's a, there's a, you know. And I just said, you know, these are poor, lonely people, and they just troll. The, their life is the Capital Weather Gang. They need to get some sort of Lonely Hearts Club where they can, like, date each other or something. You know, so I think that, so, so the Washington Post should announce this kind of deal where you know, it's not just we're not posting about the weather now. We're going to start organizing your social life. You know, they should have get-togethers, and they could go out in a park and watch be in, be in the weather. Go out and be in the weather, not just watch it from your window and post about blog about it on the Capital Weather Gang. So Washington Post starting <laughs> my idea, the Capital Weather Gang Lonely Hearts Club, and they should do that. And, you know, everybody registers and you put down your sexual preferences and all that. You know, I like to have sex in the rain or it's better in the snow. Or <laughs> I don't know, man. They really need to do that. Congratulations to Paul Fari for breaking more news and discoveries. John Hendricks, you know, he's the guy who founded Discovery Channel and all that, those networks and Discovery Communications is, is retiring. Uh, oh, wait, wait. Fari didn't break the news, did he? <laughs> That's another one. Another piece of news I want to see. Paul Fari resigns from the Washington Post to do something he was made to do. That's write textbooks. I think he should write textbooks about journalism. I think that's what that guy should do. Um, anyhow, oh, I'm sure he'll do something in tomorrow's paper or something. I don't know. This paper, I'm telling you, man, the style section, it just continues to be awful. It, you know, everything I read yesterday on the Internet is in today's style section. You know, the guy from Parks and Rec who plays the libertarian dude, he's going to be doing the... Uh, that um, the RTCA dinner, you know, whatever. Um, I read that yesterday all over the internet, and oh, well, we'll, we'll put it in tomorrow's Washington Post. So tomorrow's news, to then you know, it's just like, oh god. And then they have to write tech geeks. They're now dressing up now that they're rich and famous. They're wearing better clothes. They're not showing up in cargo pants. God damn it! If I'm gonna, they what about they write about me? Cut off camo pants. And I will never be corrupted into that. <laughs> oh, my word. So, anyhow, it looks like Sinclair is, um, is uh, changing its pace a little bit. They're uh, going to re restructure, what they call it, restructure the deal to uh, buy All Britain. Now, they're still going to buy All Britain. They still want to get their little grubby little Dark Lord hands on Channel 7 and News Channel 8 and do all that crazy stuff with it. But... They're now going to change around so that, you know, in some of the other markets like Harrisburg and Charleston, South Carolina, they're going to do some different deals where they'll be selling off some stations rather than put them into these closely held holding companies or whatever. I don't know. But anyhow, it still looks like, uh, in in short, dis disdaining, dis distilling the news for you, um, it still looks like Sinclair will get its grubby little hands on all Britain stations, including Channel 7, but it probably still, it may not be through the summer or maybe into the fall. Now, let, let's take a vote now. Who who believes, which is going to happen first, the Silver Line opening out to Reston? You know, I'm a mile away from the Silver Line station there at Wheelie Avenue, so my property values should go up. That's what I'm hoping. But anyhow, um, will, will that happen first, or will the Sinclair deal to buy Channel 7 and all Britain's things go first? I don't know. We're looking at probably late summer, maybe the fall for that stuff to happen. Who knows? Some really sad news here, too. 
I don't know what. Is there something about Baltimore? Um, Maria Dennis, who hosts the morning show at Mix 106.5 there in Baltimore, hot adult contemporaries, diagnosed with cancer. Leukemia, young woman. And now we just hear that Nestor Aparicio, 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 Nestor, Nasty Nestor, the owner of uh, Baltimore Sports Talker WNST, which never shows up in the ratings up there anymore. But anyhow, he's a nice guy. His wife has been diagnosed with leukemia also. It's sad. I mean, I don't know. It's It's got to be something in the water up there in Baltimore. It's, I don't know. There's a lot of those chemical plants up there. I remember living in New Jersey, um, you know, south of Philly there when we were kids, when I was a kid. And a lot of cancer in that area and a lot of chemical plants and refineries around, man. I don't know. It's scary. But anyhow, our best wishes go out to both Jennifer and Maria for um, a speedy recovery. And Nestor also says that he's going to go back into radio now. You know, instead of just owning the station, he's going to get back on the mornings there at WNST. You know, Nestor... I think NST could get some decent ratings if you get on FM. Figure out a way. Make a deal with CBS. <laughs> now, they're not going to do that because they're your competition. They're killing you with 105.7. But if you can get the station somehow on FM, I don't know. One of those translator stationy station -y things that might help for you up there. I don't know. Um, I also got a nice little email from one of my friends over there at WJFK. Dave, 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 why do you tell why do you tell the world that we're tied with WTEM? We're doing so much better. Look at the male demos. Well, I get this from radio guys all the time. You know, they always give me some sort of demo breakdown and hey, how much better we're doing than this other station, da 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 da. But in the overall numbers, if you look at the six plus numbers for the month of February, WTEM and WJFK are tied, okay? And if you look in the mornings, yes. WJFK does much better in the mornings because the junkies get pretty good ratings and, and Mike and Mike over on TEM, you know, don't get anything. That's what I that's what I think they ought to hire Don Geronimo for the mornings at WTEM. Man, do it. It would get you some ratings. You know, I don't know, man. But no. And he was doing a podcast, which he's going to charge. I don't know how many people are going to sign up for the Don Geronimo podcast. I like Don Geronimo, and I would listen to his podcast, but I'm not chilling up money for it. I just don't know. I, there's so many things on the internet. It's more than Netflix. I mean, Netflix is $7.99 a month. And that's a whole bunch of movies and all this other crazy stuff. And Don Geronimo for a two-hour podcast when it's $9.99 a month. I don't know. I, I bet you he's going to have to do some sort of free content. He's going to have to. Advertising supplied free content. I don't know. But I really think he belongs back. And I know he knows. I know deep in his heart of hearts, he really wants to be back on the real radio. And that's where Don needs to be. A real radio <laughs> And I just don't know why, you know, D, maybe he, you know, Don picked on uh, uh, Dan Snyder a whole lot. Redskins owner, you know, owns Red Zebra Radio, which owns WTEM over the years. So maybe there's some bad blood there. But I just think that's the perfect place for Don to be right now. The mornings, doing the morning show, a local and live morning show there on WTEM ESPN 980. Uh, other big news, Jason Kidd joins a company called New Generation. I like Jason. He seems to be a really nice guy. But CBS, you know, is one of those crazy companies. I don't know. Is it run by the mafia? It seems like it's run by the mafia. <laughs> I'm not saying it is, but it certainly seems like these dark overlords kind of. Ugh. But anyhow, um, so he's going to do a joining a company called New Generation in D.C. They're kind of launching a new radio format called Get Smash. It sounds like a cool format. Next generation of oldies without saying the world oldies, oldies classic hit stations that target 50 and over, but very few focus on the 30 to 50 year old demographic. I like that. It's probably what PGC should have done. In fact, I was saying that with PGC. They should have gone into some sort of a a rhythmic contemporary oldies format, you know, like that jam and oldies they used to do on 99 five years ago. I don't know. But anyhow, PGC's ratings are slowly trekking upward. Um, you know, we'll see. Um, you know, the latest ratings were good for PGC, not great. They're, they're heading in the right direction anyhow. So, uh, we will see about that. Um, whatever. All right, folks. I know I had some more stuff to say. I always do that. You know, I sign off and then I think, Damn it, I had something else to say. But that's all I'm going to say to you. Keep it under 10 minutes. And other people, other, a lot of people say, keep your damn Dave TV short. You're too friggin' long. Okay, 10 minutes. We're going to be under 10 this time. Thanks for watching Dave TV for that 21st of March, 2014. Buck, um, Dano.